And we're live. Well, hello there, plebs. Welcome to the Respawn Point. This is your 17th Respawn. Respawn Mondays is a weekly video game show. We talk about some of our favorite games while giving you the latest news updates. Join us on the Respawn Point every week to help us get back into the game. Today, me and Elias are going to be talking about uh, some of the games we're excited for, uh, namely Monster Hunter World and Kingdom Hearts 3. We are your hosts, Nick Barry. And Elias Christensen. So Elias, how's your week been? Uh, my week was pretty terrible, but uh, it's better now. Um, we had a ton of plumbing issues. We had to get the septic tank drained uh, basically the day after a blizzard. So there was like a foot of snow on top of it and the ground is frozen. Oh yeah. A couple days of like really holding your, you know, <laughs> your business. <laughs> Did you really? Uh, I mean, I, I mean, I can go outside, but like, right, but you know, never mind. You're like, okay, well, I better go somewhere because I gotta do some business. <laughs> yeah, that's not okay. Yeah, that's yeah. that's awful. Yeah, we were. I mean, and plus with my dad, uh, having to mention, we didn't really want to make him do any of that stuff or like change his routine, so we were just letting him flush, and it would back up into the tub, and then we take care of it. Gotcha. Yeah, so, so sorry, needless to say, you've been pretty busy. Sorry for that very graphic start to the stream. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, after that, dude, I've been having a, a pretty good weekend of uh, video gaming. Uh, played a bunch of uh, Kingdom Hearts and CSGO and feeling good. Nice. Uh, they're, they're saying you sound kind of quiet, Elias. Oh, okay. Uh, thanks, guys. Uh, um, yeah, me. Okay, cool. Okay. Um... So, what have you been playing this week? I've been playing, um, like I said, some PUBG, some CSGO, and some Kingdom Hearts. By the way, how has your week been? I don't think I asked you that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, it's been okay. Uh, fine. We did get, you know, like 12 inches of snow on Thursday, so that was fun. Yep. Um, pretty much just stayed in and played games, so that was a good chance. Because I actually didn't work. So, usually... it. I mean, 12 inches is kind of rough, so uh, my boss canceled work, so I was able to stay home and, and sleep in. Then I got to play some games, um, which was good. Hmm. And then the weekend, you know, the weekend was fun. And Monday, you know, so I respawning because Mondays, Mondays aren't fun. <laughs> yeah. So, um, no, yeah, I just had a, I had to work today, and it was okay. Then I, I changed my oil in my car. I fixed uh, my my windshield washer fluid because it wasn't, wasn't coming out, so I finally fixed that after oh. a couple months. What was it like? A, did you have like some ice in it, or was it like a pinched uh, tube? It, it was a, it was a pinched tube. Oh, that stinks. Yep, it was actually like I, I was thinking, you know, maybe it was clogged or maybe the pump wasn't working. But no, I I finally it's been it's been broken for like a month or two, and I finally forced myself to fix it because you know in the winter all the all the salt gets stuck on your windshield, and I've been using like um like water bottles like out the window to like put on the windshield to like wash it um so yeah i'm, <laughs> I'm glad to think and get get some fluid back in there <laughs> Ooh. um so you know it's been it's been good though well that's good that's good to hear yeah yep so that's not that, definitely that... definitely not as bad as uh your week or <laughs> what sounds to be your week I think everybody had a pretty rough week. Not only was it, you know, did we get a foot of snow, but it, it's it been, like, 10 or below for, like, the yeah. two weeks now. It's been yeah. ridiculous temperatures out here. So. Yep. Today was finally the first, like, it was warm today. It was, like, in the 20s, but it felt like a heat wave. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so today was that just, that, out. That just goes to show you how, how cold it has been. Yeah. Um. Uh. So Cruxel in the chat says that's some ghetto ingenuity right there. <laughs> Thanks, man. I. Yeah. I. You know, I always. I always had to stock water bottles in my car at Wind all times. Windshield issues are like some of the most dangerous issues you can have while you're driving a car. Like, have you ever like not had your wipers working? Oh yeah. During a rainstorm and you're just like hand out the window with a sweatshirt, just like <laughs> hoping it doesn't start raining like harder, like. Yeah, it's not fun. No. <laughs> so it's it's good that I finally fixed it. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, so okay. What have you uh, been playing this week? I say this every week, and I feel like it's getting old, but I, I've only played PUBG. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, I, I need I need to play something new. Um, but that's kind of why we're talking about new games. Yeah. So that that kind of plays a part of it, part in it. I do get to play some League, uh, League of Legends, a couple matches. So that's good. I've I've been. Well, we can talk about this a little bit later. But like, no, no we'll talk about it now. Okay. I am like, I am almost. I'm like ninety percent done with PUBG. <laughs> wow. Like, I, I'll I'll just... play it if everyone's on because it's like one of those games where it's, in my opinion, it's only fun to play with other people. And if if people are on, it's like okay, like fine, I'll play. But I, for whatever reason, it's not because you know the game's hard or that you don't win a lot. It's more so just I think the enjoyment I got out of the game has the well has run dry. Oh, yeah. So I'm, yeah, I'm kind of like you know it's it's I don't know. I, I just don't find the same enjoyment I got of it when I first started playing it for the first three months or so. Um. So yeah, I think I'm kind of winding down, and I think once once you know Monster Hunter comes out at the end of this month, I'll probably I, that's all that's pretty much all I'm gonna be playing for a while. Well, hey, I mean that's not bad. I like I've gone on a bunch of little tangents, like with Borderlands, or right now I'm working through Kingdom Hearts, and sometimes it's just good. Like you get burned out playing the same competitive game over and over and over again. Um, yeah. I know that's where I'm at with Ark, and I probably said that so many times, and then I'll get into it for like two weeks where I don't sleep. But um, yeah, everybody, I think everybody goes through that. Yeah, I think you know games. I think games in general aren't supposed to be played. You know, you're not. You're not the games aren't meant to be played. For I mean, they they are, but I think maybe as a person more so. I I think it's it's better to play maybe a couple different games. And even if it's one game, not indefinitely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it depends. I mean, I think I think PUBG is an example of the content is one map and one type of, you know, objective. And th- for it to last as long as it did, just I think I think it's it's saying a lot about the game. And obviously, we know because the game is very popular. Um, well, the game with like that little content it is impressive that it's as popular and it has gone at least for me able to keep my attention for so long. Um, I, think, I think at this point, I'm just ready to, to move on. I think it's just the multiplayer aspect of it because, and like you said, there's not a ton of content. Everybody, you play a couple of matches, you know what's going on. So even your friends that don't play a ton can play it. Friends that do play a ton can still play it. And it is, uh, you know, quite the social game. And with the length of matches and freedom to go anywhere, do anything, I think we're getting a lot of, like, this is something that um, Brian Green was alluding to on the uh, HD podcast. Is like, they're excited to see what people make on the creative side of things. Like, <laughs> he wants people to make movies in his game, which people have been doing in Arma and, uh, you know, any game that you can really record models in for a long time. So, I think there's just a lot of potential, and that's why people are super excited about it. Yeah. Yeah, no, Definitely. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think just, just for me, not to say, not to repeat myself, but I think it's just run its course to put it simply. Yeah. You'll come back to it. No. Yeah. And that's, yeah, that's what I just want to say too. Like, I'm not going to never play it ever again, but like that was, that's been the only game, like 95% of the time we're all on, that's what we're playing. And I think it, it was kind of like the same thing where when I was waiting for Battlefront 2 to come out, this game kind of uh, t- took its place while I was waiting. And, you know, it kind of made me glaze over Battlefront 2 because that game has its own problems. And so now it's kind of just a-, a middle game until I reach the release of a new game. And I think I think ga- the games in-, in general, there's so many good games out there. I think you shouldn't be stuck on one forever. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, there's too many games to come out to do that. Um, like, I mean, you're getting Monster Hunter. I'm thinking about getting Monster Hunter, which means I gotta get a PS4, like, within a month. Um, yep. And At least you know it won't go to waste. Yeah, that's, I know I'll have people to play with, and I know I need a PS4 anyway. Yeah. Um, so I'm working on that, for sure. And, and, which is sort of exciting, because, like, 
at least then like I have multiple purchases to justify the main purchase of a PS4 because before it, like it was even hard just thinking like oh I'm just doing this for one game, uh, but now I'm excited like oh now that I've bought it maybe I could buy some other games on yeah. <laughs> or at least be prepared when maybe they release the Final Fantasy VII remake or you know. Yeah, when they finally release the Final Fantasy VII remake, <laughs> two consoles away. I mean, that's like ten years away, but because okay, not to get sidetracked or jump to a different topic, but does Square Enix make Kingdom Hearts? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay, so what is up with them and taking forever for them to release these games? I don't know. They just won't. because I'm okay. So watching the trailer again, um, like I said last week or whatever, like. I'm not even mad. It looks so good. It looks so good. So, so I'm, yeah, I'm mad. But yeah, there was a bunch of sub stories that I got to play through, and I'm gonna play through again. I've gotten my money's worth from those games. Like people that love Final Fantasy games, they play them multiple times. Yeah. You get your money's worth, and never mind. <laughs> they're still releasing Final Fantasy VII. The game's good enough that not only does it have two spinoffs and a movie. But it's getting a remake, which I mean, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. No, I th- I'm I, I've I'm excited for. It. I I wanted to get it. I still want to get it. But it's just been it's been so long since they've announced it. And then they talked about you know releasing you know half the game, and then they would um, have periodic updates with chapters. And we yeah, still haven't heard anything. I think that's that's still where they're leaning. Um, uh, in the chat, Cruxel says games are best enjoyed with frequent breaks. Allow yourself to rediscover why you love certain games when you come back to them, for sure. Yeah, um, yeah, I agree with that. That's that's it's a, it's good advice, I think. And then and then a Higgsy says, uh, one thousand five hundred and fifty five hours on Ark? Question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, Tolmaeth. <laughs> yeah. That, is that is that your uh, up to date hour yeah. count? Yeah, it sounds right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I put a lot of time into that game. Too much. Yeah, but yeah. Tim Screw says some could say that you're arc addicted. That was, that was pretty <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I am. Um, I'm an arc sports athlete, and some would say I'm not even good at the game. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably not true. Yeah. That's not true. Um. But okay. <laughs> what have What have you been playing? Uh. So. I uh, played some PUBG with you guys last night. I don't know if you, I even played a game with you guys last night. I, no. I do. I duoed with Matt while I was waiting, and then I went and played some solos. And me and Croxel were hanging out in stream, but um, had some decent runs. Got third place, fourth place. Um, there was this one game. I was talking to Croxel. I was just laying prone as I do, and um, I saw two guys running. You know, one guy running up took him out one guy running up took him out it was like towards last circle it was like top 10 scenario um and i i said to myself i shouldn't go check that body but i'm (laughs) but i'm gonna go check that body because the wall was closing so wall passes me but the guy has a awm so i'm like oh this was so worth it like so worth it and like i'm going around getting the 300 magnum getting ready to go as I start running away to get back into the wall, I just get headshotted by like an AK. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was almost worth it. It was almost worth it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'll happen. Yeah, no. I, speaking of, um, I forgot to mention we were playing. You know, when we were playing uh, parallel to you guys, um, we won two matches yeah, tw- last night. Was it two in a row, or was it? No, it was. I think it was. There was like one or two games in the in between um, that we lost. And I think one of them was really quick, so it was it was almost back to back, and it was unfortunately I died both times, so I didn't really, <laughs> I really I didn't really help win, which which kind of stinks. Um, but yeah, no, uh, Taylor Taylor got his first win, actually two wins. He had never won before, and so he had he got two last night. Um, yeah. so, you know him. He's the all, first game, he's all me and Kyle, it. You're ninety percent done with uh, PUBG. Taylor's ninety percent ready to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was like, yeah. Well, actually, he was like, you know what? Now that I finally won, I can quit whenever, and I can be okay. That's so I think totally I think a lot of us say that. 
Uh, like you can't, cause I, I mean, at least for me, like I have, I have the screenshot of me being like number two seventy two on the solo first person leaderboard. Yeah. So like, I'm pretty. Sh I can quit and be like, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> but I, well, you won though. I, I, no, oh, yeah, I've won a bunch. Yeah, and I even won my. I think it was my first game, uh, on because it was like, I was playing it like past midnight on whatever day the ladders reset so my first game of the month right, right was a win so it just went threw me way up there but yeah i mean you know it's funny because you like playing PUBG in a group i don't mind playing PUBG solo because i can just do what i want and be sneaky right. i think it's for me it's definitely a social thing it it is fun to play social for sure well like, you know if me and ethan play a game and we're you know playfully not shooting each other uh, <laughs> uh, it is it is fun that way, but my competitiveness uh, gets to me, and I want to play solo sometimes. Um, but yeah, so I oh. I played some PUBG. Um, I played some CS:GO this past week. I got I was just playing Wingman games because I wanted to get placed. Um, lot hard. Like I had like six wins. Uh, you have to get like ten wins to get placed. Um, and the last four were super hard. I kept getting placed with people that, uh, disconnected people that, um, disconnected and came back. And like, I don't know if, I don't know. It seemed, I had a couple games that were pretty sketchy where I was like, did he just like toggle on cheats? <laughs> we didn't win. So I guessing he didn't, but it, it still seemed pretty sketchy. Um, but yeah, I eventually got him. I got placed, uh, Master Guardian 2 in Wingman, but I think it's a lot easier to get placed high, in, and that's like a, I don't know, like a gold to platinum, if you're thinking in league terms, I would think. Maybe maybe around there, maybe even not. Maybe it's just decent gold. Um, that's pretty good. Yeah. But it, in normal um, in normal CSGO, I'm typically like gold Nova something, which is more like high silver, maybe you're in gold. Nice. Um, and then, yeah, I played some King of Hearts. I've been playing through the uh, Atlantica level, which is pretty fun. Um, trying to kill Ursula. Yep, I, yeah, I watched your stream oh, a yeah, little bit tuned, the other night. You were tuned in. That was pretty fun. Yeah, we were, we were trying to help you figure out that, that urchin, that sea urchin. Yeah, that was that was really annoying. It didn't move until I left and came back. And then that wasn't even the key to, I mean, that gave me an item, but that wasn't how you progressed the story. Right. Sometimes the the... T underlying texting games is not all that helpful. <laughs> I guess not. Oh, what, do you, do you off the top of your head do you know when Kingdom Hearts two came out? Uh, so that was Kingdom Hearts one. Um. Oh, oh okay. Kingdom Hearts one, I want to say, it came ar out around two thousand four. Maybe okay, not so even. Right, maybe maybe so... two thousand two. Um, it was for the PS two, right? Yeah, it came out for the PS two. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. Yeah. No. Anything else about what you've been playing? Um, Cruxel, uh in the chat mentioned anything above uh, Master Guardian is Hacker Central and Wingman. Yeah. G Lol got uh, initially ranked Legendary Eagle, and every game I played was against blatant cheaters because there's no Overwatch in that mode. He says. Um. So Overwatch is where your games get recorded, and if you get reported, um. Uh, like there's say. A good you like they used yeah. to do in League. Remember how they used to do in League where you could do, like, uh, read the chat and see the kills and item purchases? Um, I forget what You mean, like the, like, the Tribunal? Yeah, Tribunal. So it's, yeah, it's yeah. like Tribunal, but you get a whole video of that person's okay. perspective. And so you can you can likely tell if they you know if they have walls or if they have aim lock so in in normal competitive uh over overwatches where if you get reported a video of your game will get sent to anybody who wants you know people mm. that want to help um police the community so, that's cool but in wingman that doesn't exist currently so it's people go there to hack to hack yeah that sucks yeah yeah um no that's pretty much it for me what i've been playing Okay, cool. All right, uh, this will kind of transition to, into what we want to be playing instead of what we're playing. Um, and uh, do you want me to go first? Do you want to? 
Uh, you go, Kingdom you Hearts. go first. You go first. I'm gonna I'm gonna look something up for the Kingdom Hearts uh, thing. Okay, cool. All right, so for me, uh, I am on a high of Monster Hunter World right now. Very into the marketing that they're putting out, and I am extremely excited. I know Connor, who is in the chat, has gotten me into it. Uh, he has played on the PS all the PSP versions, uh, Freedom Unite, and all of those. I'm not too familiar with the, the exact titles. Um, but regardless, he's gotten me into it, and I'm hooked. Even though I haven't, pl- I've only played like one quest, and I did bad, but I'm into it anyways. <laughs> um, so I'll just go. I'll actually go over some of the news that we got recently, and that will kind of explain why I'm so excited. Um, we got the Elder Dragons trailer on the fifth, which was last Friday during a live stream. And this trailer, like I've, I've probably watched this trailer like. 10 times at least because it's 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 such a good trailer just in general but the the i don't know it, it's hard to I'll, I'll say this it's hard to get someone into this game i think because connor has been telling me about it for months and i was like oh yeah it's cool we actually if anyone remembers we kind of went over some monster hunter news back and like respawn three or four maybe and then we kind of dropped the game because i didn't really care about that that much and we had other games to talk about um so i think it's hard to get someone into it but if if someone likes like looting and playing pve with friends and they like a challenge and they like something that isn't gonna be a quick story then this game is for you um and then like the best the best part of it is that all the dlc in the foreseeable future will be free and there's no no stupid loot boxes there's no <laughs> there's no stupid Battlefront 2 loot boxes in this game. There's no there is microtransactions, but it's you it, there's certain costumes um that will be, you know, we don't know exactly the details, but they've said that there will be microtransactions and the fact that you can buy certain armor sets. And to me, I'm totally okay with that because it's cosmetic and it's not a loot box. So yeah, well, okay, so armor sets, uh would they have any different attributes? Um no, just, these are purely cosmetic. Just be so skin, like, skins for your current armor set, essentially. Exactly. So whatever armor set you have will give you the stats, but this will just be like an overlay of like a skin. Okay, that sounds good. So it, yeah, it's purely purely aesthetic, which I think is. And then there's also there's like stickers and like even emotes. So I think you know who knows maybe some of those will be purchasable. Um, but regardless, I'm totally totally fine with it. Um, you know, it's not a loot box, so. It's good, and then so in the at the end of the trailer they also announced their the first uh, free DLC will come in the springtime and they teased a, a new monster already, um, so it's it's if you're like into it it's like very exciting especially because it's the first Monster Hunter to come to console since 2004 I believe I think I mentioned that last week yeah um, yeah yeah it's still pretty impressive that the uh, the cult following is is strong. Yeah, I think it's the people who like the game are like they like. I don't. I haven't heard one person say they don't like the game. As far as like because it's a bad game, maybe they say they don't like it because it, it's not like they're they're they don't like that type of game of like yeah. an action RPG. But I haven't heard one person say like this is like a bad game. It it stinks. You know what's funny? I remember when I w- I had a PlayStation Portable. Um, yep. A ton of oh. games got made for that system that nobody was buying. There'd be a bunch of like tiny little JRPGs that no one was talking about, and I would buy them, and they like they'd be amazing and like long and complex battle systems. And I could see how like wow, like this is like if you're gonna play this, you could replay it like five times if you wanted. But yeah. Sometimes, like, in a game like that where, you know, things are complicated, um, it's niche, no, no one else bought it, so none of their friends are playing it. Um, like, there's tons of good games out there uh, in, like, the action RPG or even turn-based RPG uh, realm yeah. that are just so niche that get overlooked. Yeah. No, yeah. I mean, I think... I lost my train of thought. Um but <laughs> totally totally gone no 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 no. um but no it's 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 different because and we kind of mentioned this last week but 
you know, it's the first one to come to console with, you know, a whole, you know, a whole new engine as far as, you know, the graph, the graphics compared to handheld are completely different. And so I know, like, I know Connor's really excited because to see, you know, like the, one of his favorite game series to come to a console with the, with the graphics in the world, um, no pun intended, um, is, is exciting. And I can see why. And as someone brand new to the series, coming into it it's 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 hard it's almost hard for me to look at this game being on a handheld it's like well like how but it it, it's more i don't know it's it's difficult to it's funny like playing as depending on the uh camera perspective and um amount of ui involved there's tons of great games for um for i'm thinking back to the playstation portable i played so many games on it you could play puzzle games Yep. Um, Daxter, you played? Did you ever play? No, you played. Yep, I play, I, no, 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 I played Daxter. Oh, you played Daxter. That was such yep. a good game, and it, yep. um, a huge world. Honestly, like I love that game because I played all the original Jack and Dexter's, so like it fit right in between one and two, and it explained yeah uh, what Daxter was up to while Jack was in prison. So that that was really cool for me. Yeah, and so, like, it's funny. Sometimes we do get a limited view of, like, what a portable game is. Like, I think especially now uh, phone games are are perpetuating a stereotype of what a mobile yeah. game is. Um, you know, you basically click buttons. But the, like, the, if you had, part of it is if you had dedicated media to read off of, like the DS with cards or, you know, what the PSP had with discs, like they don't, people don't want to put that much uh, data on your phone um, when you're downloading them. So right, yeah. Like, and even with the DS, a lot of games are not like 3D and like the environment doesn't look amazing because um, they didn't want to put like that many textures and that big of a world map in. Um, but I, yeah, the PSP was like a golden age of video gaming for me almost. Like yeah, no, I remember. I can't remember the name of the game, but I remember back when I was. A lot younger, my friend. Oh, you know him. You you remember Drew, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Um, but he let me borrow his his PSP um, for a little while, and I I don't remember the name of the game, but it was like a cool little, almost like an Avatar Airbender type game where you had like the different elements, and then you had to pick up scrolls, which would um, be like a different, um, like a different combo. It was a different move in a combo. So like if you correct, collected all the scrolls. You had this whole combo, and it was a, it was just like a a three D, just like I don't know, like you had a sword, and it was cool. It was awesome. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You, you know what's fun? okay? So I don't remember everything. I know me and Drew traded stuff a lot, and I know I had multiple PlayStation portables. So part of me is thinking, did I sell that PlayStation portable to Drew? I mean, <laughs> I. <laughs> I mean, I have a PSP in my closet. I'm pretty sure is yours. <laughs> <laughs> Do you? Yeah. Oh wow. Which one is it? Yeah. It's just a P- like an original PSP. Because I'm really trying to find. I had the I had the white. Um, no, it's black. PSP with Darth Vader on the back. Oh yeah, for I Battlefront. Had that, I had that one, and I was, and I don't know where it went. Did I? I don't know if I sold it or what happened, but if I found that thing, like that would bring me back. Okay. Yeah. No, I don't. I have a black one. Which, I might, I might if just, you want I back, might just want to. No, no, don't worry about <laughs> it. <laughs> I don't know if any of my discs work anymore. Anyway, you know what I played a ton on the PSP? We're getting pretty distracted now. Yeah, we're playing really distracted. I used to play uh, Rogue Squadron. Yeah. Yeah. Star Wars oh yeah. Star Rogue Squadron, so good. You used to yep. run around as uh, Han Solo owning noobs. It, that game was probably better than Battlefront 2. <laughs> I think it was. Oh man. Probably. Um no, okay. We can <laughs> we can go back to Monster Hunter now. <laughs> okay. Um But no, yeah, I mean I can I can see how it was on, on portable. I mean obviously because it was, duh. But you yeah, know, it's it's cool seeing it come to a console and it be so much larger than what it has been. And I think that would be really good for people like me uh, playing it for the first time. So I'm excited. And yeah. then, so to finish finish off of the trailer uh, stuff, if 
you know the series. We have two returning Elder Dragons. We have Toestra and Kushladora. And one's a fire dragon and one's more wind, I believe. Okay. And then we saw another new monster, uh, Dodogama, which is like, he's like a toad, but he's like lava. He's like a lava mm. toad. So it looks like. Cool. And then we already saw a very small glimpse of him in a previous trailer, but there's a, um, like a, he's still unnamed, but he, lo- he looks almost maybe like a zombie dragon. Um, that's the best way you could probably describe it. Um, so we saw a much better uh, glimpse of him in this trailer. So very exciting. Four new uh, monsters total. Well, I mean, three if you don't count the one we already got a glimpse of. Um, so, you yeah, know, it's very, it's very exciting. I'm, I, the, the coolest thing for me being new to the series is having so many of these really big monsters that are all unique and just like I'm, I'm excited to see like new ones. And it's weird, like, because for me, like, I've never played the game before. And yet it's, it's cool even for me to see all these different monsters and to, and to see gameplay and be like, oh, like, you know, if you hunt that monster, then you can craft, you know, your, an armor set out of it. And it's different than it's just, it's, I think. It's a very cool concept, mm-hmm. and so yeah, it's cool. I, I, I'm I am all for it. I think boss design is almost a dying art at this point. Like, okay, like, yeah. So that's why I told Connor, I'm like, this game is basically Final like Fantasy. constant boss fights. Yeah. Well, that too. It's like it's like Final Fantasy, but you're always facing boss fights, and it's not like turn based or anything. Like, like the one thing I do remember Final Fantasy games for is, I mean, I didn't. I, I'm not in love with turn-based combat. Um, really? It, I love turn-based. It, it depends on the game. It really depends on the game. But I tend to I tend to like action RPGs more. Um, but when you walk into a room and you're like, what the heck is that? Like, that doesn't even have <laughs> a corporeal form. Like, <laughs> I'm just facing a blob being with, you know, turrets all over itself. Um, yeah. Like, sometimes you walk into a room and you're just stunned and you're like, I don't even know how to beat that. Where do I got to attack it? What do I got to do to it? Does it have resistances? Like, I, I think that's something I'll probably really enjoy about this game is just seeing, you know, pretty inventive boss, bosses. Yeah, exactly. And that's what's so cool. Like, every every monster has, you know, unique attacks and different tells as far as when it's going to attack. They have different weak points. Um Certain monsters uh, are elemental, so they'll have different, you know, uh, thun- uh, lightning yeah. or water, fire. Um, and then same thing, is that, that's why it feels so much like final, like a Final Fantasy game to me, because it has, you know, th- those classic uh, type of uh, ailments and also elements. Yeah. So in that aspect, it's really cool, and it's also very familiar. It's just now you're taking those things and you're making it an action RPG, mm. and... It's cool. I mean, the whole the whole premise of being able to hunt these monsters and then that's you use them to craft your your equipment is is so cool. It's just cool. Yeah. I think if any if anyone can get on board with with how the combat works, I think it, it, they like this game. Yeah. Yeah. So, it, it's plus, gonna, you it's can, gonna be exciting. Plus, Ho- hopefully, I if I am able to pick up a PS4 this month. Um, Maybe I'll figure out how to stream on it. <laughs> yeah, um, actually, cool. streaming streaming on a PS4 is very easy. It's pretty easy, yeah. But I just like to work in my current. I, see, like I right, like streaming. Right, right. I like streaming on the PS3 because I just take the video output from it and then run it through my computer. So my webcam still goes on top of it, and that doesn't always right. work the same with the PS4. Right. Um, I'm sure you can figure it out though. Yeah. I love buying new things for the stream and spending hours <laughs> learning about them. <laughs> um, yeah, that's the time-consuming thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but you yeah, know that that's the other great thing about this game is that it's you know you can fight the monsters with the party up to four, um, you know, four people, so you and three others. So again, it brings the social aspect of multiplayer games uh, nowadays into a game that has been very popular for over a decade. And so that was the first surprising thing to me. When I first heard of this game, I didn't know anything about it. I didn't realize that like this has been going on for over a decade, especially over in Japan. And so I think I think that's maybe part of what's appealing to it is that knowing that, okay, these guys have been doing have been making these games for a long time. It's not like this is the first one and you're kinda of taking a risk. I mean, it is a lot it is the first one that's a lot different, but at the same time, I think they know what they're doing. And I think coming into a franchise that's already been 
successful is kind of like um a breath of relief or whatever. So yeah, I'm cool. That's true. Yeah, exciting. So you know, I mean, pick up a PS4 and we can play. Yeah. Speaking of me picking up a PS4, um, my little half of what we're expecting for uh, what we want to be playing this year is Kingdom Hearts, which is honestly, we're probably, I mean, we're probably not going to get Kingdom Hearts 3 till holiday season or something. I don't even okay. Know. Okay. I want to ask you a question now. Yeah. Do you, be honest, do you think this game will actually come out this year? <laughs> so so long as Sony doesn't announce a PS5 this year, I think it will. Why why would uh that deter it? I, I, the only thing I could see is them wanting to wait an update to the latest hardware and have a simultaneous release. Okay, like a flagship type game to ship with the new console. Uh that no, they don't really care about that as far as I know. Um, but just, I they like releasing it. And, I mean, subsequently, currently, we've gotten releases for all the consoles. But it takes a long time, typically. Um, like, I'm playing Kingdom Hearts 1 on a PS3. And there's Kingdom Hearts 1 is available on a PS4. But it's bundled, it's repackaged, it's updated. Um, I think when they initially launch a game, they want it to be its own thing and... No. See, it's weird. What I, I have to do a little bit more research because I, I had heard that they were thinking about doing um, simultaneous release for Kingdom Hearts 3, not only on um, PlayStation, but Xbox. Oh, well. Which is like, no, don't, no. Don't do <laughs> because, because at that point, at that point, the Xbox has a 4K Blu-ray player. So why wouldn't I go and get that console, Sony? <laughs> right that's true i have to I, but i still have to get the sony console because of you know the rest of the back catalog is all on it and so that's what i was going to go into is if if you know you've played kingdom hearts 3 or kingdom hearts in the past and i'm pretty sure some people that listen to the podcast and probably some guys in the chat um have played before um i was going to talk about what's available now if you wanted to play through the collection um so currently what I'm playing through is Kingdom Hearts 1. Um, and, I mean, so I have Kingdom Hearts HD 1.5 Remix. <laughs> and that's available, <laughs> that's available on the PS3 and the PS4 as part of the uh, Kingdom Hearts HD 1.5 and 2.5 Remix um, collection. You can get both of those on the um, PS4. They were initially released for the PS3. So they're each a three-game collection um, that has been bundled on the PS4. And then there's a three-game collection that's on the uh, PS4 by itself as well. It's called Kingdom Hearts HD 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. So, the, I mean, honestly, we're just going to be going over the naming nomenclature for the rest of this podcast. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna um, bore our whole audience for the yeah, rest of the show. So uh on Buckle the H- on the H D one point five uh remix, you have Kingdom Hearts Final Mix, which uh Final Mix is typically what ended up getting released in Japan. It would come with extra cutscenes. Um originally when Final Mixes would be released, it'd be it like it have Japanese subtitles or Japanese like it was it was pretty confusing sometimes when you would go and buy the final mix because there were different versions you could get um and I don't know that they released one for every game but definitely the main games in the series one and two um so it contains uh Kingdom Hearts final mix Kingdom Hearts re chain of memories so, which was originally released as chain of memories for the Game Boy Game Boy Advance uh SP I believe. I don't know if it was limited to the SP, but it was originally released on Game Boy Advance, which is a card-based combat RPG. Like, you have to build a deck. It was pretty crazy. Um, And then they have Kingdom Hearts 358 
over two days. That's right. They put a fraction in their title. Um, <laughs> I don't know why, but it, um, this was actually a really cool game because you got to um, see Roxas's perspective. And if you played the series, you know who that is. Um, if not, you got to find out. Um, but uh, what's cool about this is that it's not actually playable on Kingdom Hearts uh, HD 1.5 Remix. It's actually in the form of a movie. Um, essentially cut up uh, uh, um, from all the uh, cinematics. And uh, p potentially additional cinematics that they made um, for in-game cutscenes that they did. And it... <laughs> It's two hours and fifty minutes long. So, Dang. yeah. So, um, so base and basically that's gonna follow a trend for each of these compilations. You get two games, one you know one main game, a subplot, and then a movie that's made up from a subplot game. Um, which, you know, deciding whether or not I wanted to watch, I would want to watch Chain of Memories or Three Fifty Eight Over Two. I feel like Three Fifty Eight Over Two was a funner game so i sort of sort of plus uh i played uh chain of memories on the game boy advance so to see those cutscenes in hd might have been more fun if they made that into a movie but yeah that's what it is so you get two games in a movie hmm. um so i'm just i'm just looking at the the kingdom hearts 3 uh wiki here okay and <laughs> this game was officially revealed at E3 in 2013. <laughs> <laughs> that was that will be five years. So what's really crazy, what's really crazy is that after Kingdom Hearts 2, um, we started seeing trailers for what we understood to be Kingdom Hearts 3, right? Like, right. it was, I don't know if those were all rumors or whatever. But people were saying, Kingdom Hearts 3, this is what it's going to look like. Um, there's thousands of Keyblades in a, in a desert, and then there's these three Keyblade, mas Keyblade Masters in armor. Like, what's going on? And that ended up just becoming um, Birth by Sleep, not Kingdom Hearts 3. And that was like, I don't even know, like 10 years ago. Um, let's see. When was, when was Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep originally released? Uh, 2010, so eight years ago. Okay, well, yeah. Uh, and that was originally released for the uh, PSP. So, ten years ago, I was seeing video for what I was told was Kingdom Hearts 3. And then they <laughs> oh said, no, this is a subplot. <laughs> this isn't the main story. Because um, they're trying to keep... I feel, like, I feel like this is like a Half-Life 3 situation. <laughs> yeah. They're Ex to... Except that it's like, you know, it'll come out eventually. Yeah. They're trying to keep the main story to Sora. So anything that doesn't involve Sora or involves Sora in a lesser um, manner, it yeah. get, gets moved to a subplot game. Okay. So, okay. So still now we're moving on to the Kingdom Hearts HD 2.5 remix um, compilation, which, okay, so the last one and this one can be bought together as a bundle on ps4 I, I don't know if it's one disc but it's one box you can buy it and it's like 40 bucks right now on amazon um so you get kingdom hearts 2 final mix you get the uh extra subtitles you might get some uh um maybe some special bosses i don't even know um probably not looking i don't think so um but typically you get some extra uh scenes um, so then you also get Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep, Final Mix. Um, so that's going to have a couple extra cutscenes as well. Uh, and it's been updated um, to be in HD versus on the, you know, because it was, it, was, it was originally released on the PlayStation uh, Portable. Um, and then you get Kingdom Hearts Recoded. Uh, and so this is probably the first game on this list that I haven't played. Um, it was released for the... Um, Ba, 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 ba. I think it was released for the DS. Yeah, it was originally released for the DS, and I didn't have one back then. So I'm actually um, excited to watch this. Uh, this is going to be the uh, movie. Um, 
and I guess it said that I think it's a three hour cinematic uh, compilation that they've uh, made here for Kingdom Hearts Recoded and so um, I'm excited to watch that one because I never played through that game so maybe fill in some holes of the Kingdom Hearts universe that I haven't uh, experienced and that brings us to Kingdom Hearts HD 2.8 Final chapter prologue. This has become very boring. I can't even believe I thought I was going to read all this. I'm not even reading. I'm just paraphrasing. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so this is this is just so if you want to play Kingdom Hearts 3 and you want to be up to date, I'm sorry I'm boring you, but this is what you need to play to understand everything because it is a bit of a complex story. Um, okay, so Kingdom Hearts 2.8, final chapter prologue, contains Kingdom Hearts, Dream Drop Distance, um, the title taking place after the events of Kingdom Hearts Recoded. So I haven't played this one, actually. Um, and it was originally released for the 3DS. So it's going to be updated. It's going to be fun. Um, and it might even have a little bit better of a control scheme because uh, originally it had touchscreen-based commands, which that's not one of my favorite. I, I can't stand any touchscreen commands. For, like, a 3D game, they typically suck. Um... They have Kingdom Hearts zero, Kingdom Hearts zero point two, Birth by Sleep: A Fragmentary Passage. <laughs> their name they need to really work on their naming scheme. But so this, <laughs> this is a short episode after the events of Birth by Sleep, which is that thing that I was talking about was originally released. Er, you know, I was seeing video and I was like, oh, that's Kingdom Hearts three. That's Kingdom Hearts three. But it, supposedly these events tie into Kingdom Hearts three. So you'll get to play as Aqua. Um, should be fun. And then they have Kingdom Hearts X back cover. Kingdom Hearts X back cover, a cinematic film, tells a new tale of the foretellers and reveals new parts of the series' history. So um, that's the film you get. I have no idea what that is. Haven't watched it yet. So I, I really got to pick up a PS4. Sorry for boring people. But if you're excited for P for Kingdom Hearts 3, maybe maybe you stuck through that whole thing. <laughs> was, that, was that the end? Yeah, that's the end. That's what's available now to play on the PS4 if you want. Look, like, honestly, this is like weeks of gameplay. It, it, which, it, hopefully, this is going to fill my time until they release it <laughs> at the end of the year. Right, right. <laughs> so... As because we've seen we've seen small glimpses of gameplay from Kingdom Hearts three, correct? Uh, yes, yes, we have the okay. current yeah that uh Japanese um Toy Story, uh trailer yep. is all from Kingdom Hearts three. Yep. Okay, so there's a couple a couple bullet points here under, under the wiki, and you can correct me if or correct the the wiki if they're wrong. Um, this is for you know Kingdom Hearts three. It says the the command menu it will return from the previous two uh games, Kingdom Hearts mm -hmm. one and two. That's what um, it looks like. Certainly, it'll be a little bit different. It, they always add yeah. a little something extra. Yeah, it's 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 pretty, um, you know, like cent central to the how the gameplay works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it says the the MP gauge from Kingdom Hearts Two will return. Uh, a second gauge, um, which looks similar to the drive gauge, has also been revealed to be the shock lock gauge, which is returning from Birth by Sleep, which you mentioned. Um, and then I thought this was interesting. It says the Keyblade will have the ability to transform itself into other specially powered weapons, such as the double bow gun and chariot that can be seen in trailers. Yeah. So I saw I saw Sora using like a giant mallet in the in the Kingdom Hearts three trailer, and I was like, "What the heck is that?" <laughs> um. So yeah, I, I had suspected something of the sort. Like he's mastered. Like it doesn't need to be a key anymore. I don't know if I like. They're gonna that. they're gonna have to change the name from Keyblade to Switchblade. Yeah, it could it could be something like that. <laughs> um, I don't know if I'm in love with that. One thing I really like about Kingdom Hearts Two is the different forms that uh, that like the drive gauge builds up to. Um, yeah. Each one had its own flavor. Uh, introduced a bit of a new mechanic, and they were all super fun to play. Um, Birth by Sleep's, like, I think you said Shock shock Drive or whatever, or Shock Gauge. Um, I wasn't as in love with Birth by Sleep's uh, fighting mechanics. Um, it was actually a little bit more complicated, which I guess I should just enjoy. But um, I, w I really like Kingdom Hearts 2. 
the way it worked. Um, yeah. So, uh, it, the new uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 looks a ton, like a ton of fun. I, I spoke about last week how um, there's a ton of new fighting mechanics like um, like being able to pilot mechs on the Toy Story uh, level. Like you go to a right, Toy, right, Story yeah. and, Toy Story and you jump in a robot and you're like shooting all these Heartless. Like it looked pretty fun. Very different. Um, I'm sure I'll have some critiques, but I, I think it, it, it is probably overall good that um, they're trying new things. Yeah. Man, it looks, looks good. Yeah. Um you you gonna pick up Nick? <laughs> um I don't know. I it, it's it's so hard to pick up at, you know after I haven't played all those 20 games. Yeah. You know what we should do is is when I get to where I'm going to watch the movies, you should just come over. There we'll you watch, go. That's we'll actually not a bad idea. Together. Yeah. I actually I did buy the original Kingdom Hearts for PS2 and I never played it. Well, hey, you're you're watching me play through it on on Twitch. Yeah, so you're sort of up That's to true. date. You, you yeah. got some of it. Yeah. Um. <laughs> did you want to move on to uh, some other news for miscellaneous games? Yeah, yeah. Let's move into the news. Uh, that was, I mean, it that was a fun discussion. We're excited for what's coming up, uh, next this year. Um. But we're we're also not very sure. It seems like a lot of companies have been taking like the first two weeks of the year off, you know, like just chilling. Yeah, well, after the holiday you know, season. Bal Balfron is by the worst. Uh, I mean, you know, they deserve vacation. Totally understand. <laughs> but with with the with the fire, or the I don't know, what you want to call it the the disaster of that what that game is. You would think they would. I don't know. I'm just. EA is probably like the worst company I've ever like had to deal with for a game that I like because Star Wars and Battlefront is both are both very special to me and having to like oh my god deal with them I, I'm just I, I'm done like I, I honestly I regret buying that game for giving them my money because they don't deserve it they took that game and they completely it, it's just it's so bad it's this week, I'm not... this week on Respawn Monday's sodium section. Um, yeah, this is just honestly like my... I, I have nothing but salt for that game, I'm sorry. It's just, it's so bad. It's it's so bad. I, honestly, I don't know how people still play that game. I don't. So, so we were talking about how game companies seem to be taking like, you know, a week or two off at the beginning of the new year, which is totally understandable, but it also results in there not being a ton of news. So how do we no. move to Battlefront? I don't know. Sorry, I just I, I took okay. that and I was like, those darn EA developers taking time off. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. No, it's okay. It's okay. I mean, I mean speaking <laughs> of, they they were talking about how they're gonna be updating the seasons and all that stuff, and it hasn't really been that chock full of um, content, I would say. So you got yeah. something. Yeah. No, I, I I mean. I don't know what they're going to do as far as everyone is so mad and they haven't said anything for like a month now. So I don't know if I, I honestly, I wish they would just be like, well, sorry. Like we lost all, like we lost so many sales. We lost so much revenue from game of microtransactions. We're just going to drop this game and we're going to move on. Honestly, I think that would be better for them than trying to bring this game back because I don't know. I, at the same time, I feel bad for the people who spend the money and like actually try to try for the game because they deserve it. But it's it's a disaster. They completely butchered that game, which could have been so good. Yeah. So I don't know. It's could have, should have, would have. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll see what happens. But at this point, as, for me, I think it's too far gone. I mean, I'm. You know, Monster Hunter, so much better. <laughs> you haven't played that game yet. I don't, no, I don't think you so can much play better. that yet. So much better. I can. You know what? That game, Monster Hunter World, is so much better. I mean, I'm excited to play Monster Hunter. I think maybe. I played one quest, I played the beta. We did cover Battlefront 2 extensively leading up to the release. Maybe we should do. Um, a respawn Monday stream of us playing Battlefront Two and trying to have some fun, maybe. That would be interesting. <laughs> but 
might be even okay. more funny. So for the for the audience, fun fact, and respawn seventeen. This idea of our show was it originally going to be a Battlefront podcast. And Elias was like, Definitely. oh, let's do like a couple of different games. And like, I'm like, at this point, I'm really glad that we did that because now we don't talk about Battlefront. And I'm glad because <laughs> the podcast would be over. We wouldn't, we wouldn't do it anymore if it was just Battlefront. Yeah, so, we wouldn't have a lot of content to put out. No, it, it, we we would just be salty. We we would have stopped. We would have stopped. Yeah. So it's good. Our show is is something bigger. I'm glad we didn't put Battlefront in the name of this podcast. Oh my God! Respawn <laughs> Battlefront Monday. I don't. Know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Those Coruscant Mondays, like. Ooh, Coruscant Mondays. <laughs> Yeah, no. No, it's good we we didn't do that. Yeah. Crux on the chat says, dodge the bullet there. Yeah, for oh, sure. Well. All right. So, um, wait, you want to get into the news? Yeah. So, you you take you take yeah. it. You... Okay. So, uh, a small note on PUBG. We haven't really heard too much else uh, since the 1.0 update. Um, but they, they did release a thing on Steam um, saying just to encourage everyone to keep using the report. Um, function because they they say it counts. You know, if you see a cheater, uh, it really helps if you have video evidence. I I thought it was interesting. They made a whole Steam uh post about this. They're like, no, keep doing, keep keep reporting people. <laughs> um, so they find that pretty helpful. Keep doing it. You do run into cheaters, so make sure to. Um, but uh, we have exceeded uh peak players. It's funny, it took until after the holidays for this to happen. I know, um, it's weird. But they hit uh, 3.138 million peak players on January 6th, uh, Saturday, I think it was 8 a.m. or something. Yeah. Um, so people still play. 8 a.m. on the East Coast. Yeah, people are like definitely like all, playing even more than before. Yeah. Um, You covered most of this Monster Hunter stuff while we were talking. Anything else you want to yeah. add? Yeah. Uh, the last thing on Monster Hunter, um, if you're a PC player and you're going to wait for this game to come out on PC... Uh, they announced that it will come out in the fall time uh, for the PC uh, version, so we got you got a little bit to wait. Um, I'm totally fine playing on my PS4, so I'm I'm happy. And at this point, I can't wait. But if you're kind of just interested in this game, but you're like, I'm just gonna wait for PC, then that's uh, around the time that it will come out, probably for you know October, November ish. But that's their that's the goal they set, um, or the you know the the time time frame they set for us. All right. Um, for uh, CS:GO, got a little bit of a shuffle. Um, Flash Gaming is going to be replacing Ty Lu at the Boston 2018 Major. Um, I believe it had to do with some uh, visa issues on Ty Lu. Uh, at least for one of their players, they weren't able to work it out. So uh, if you follow League, I think this is the same like Flash Wolves team or you know organization um, running it, but. Um, a lot of this uh, update from uh, Valve it just has to do with um, them replacing the stickers and graffitis um, for Tyloo, uh, two Flash Wolves with the uh, Mega Bundle and the Autograph Capsules. Um, there was a bit of a shuffle. People were like, oh, Tyloo, Tyloo stickers are going to be worth something. Um, they have spiked for sure. Like the, uh, I think the foil uh, for Tyloo uh, gaming sticker is uh was around two hundred dollars yesterday um so i don't know if you have it sell it but um other than that i don't think either t of those teams is going to make it out of the pre prelims so um yeah uh, if you had them picked obviously you're going to need to make a new pick in your pickups um Let's see. They had uh, in-game UI will correctly display subscribe workshop maps in all versions of the game client. So evidently, some people were having some issues uh, finding, you know, some custom maps that they had. Um, and then something about games in Sweden. Who cares? Uh, they fixed a bug where audio devices could sometimes not be changed properly in the settings menu which I actually think I was experiencing last week because I was trying to do it with my old um, audio input 
and it was just not letting me do it at all. Um, so that's nice to hear. And then they also adjusted wingman and uh, spawn positions on overpass and cobblestone. So I wonder what they changed on cobblestone. Are they going to put the? I would think. I would hope they're going to put the counter terrace a little farther back because they just own platform on B site in wingman. Um, and then overpass, they could put the terrace a little closer just to give them a little buff. But interesting. I'll have to check those out to see what they actually uh, turned into. Um, and then we had a uh, video from Jeff Kaplan for the New Year developer update uh, from Overwatch. And uh, it was just sort of some, honestly, mostly reminders. We've, we've heard about most of this, but he's just sort of reassuring us that the Overwatch League and the skins are coming soon. Um, we're going to get Blizzard World very soon, he said. He didn't guarantee it this month, so maybe look for that around uh, February. Um, he said Hero number 27 is well along, being internally tested already. Um, they're also, he said this is a very short-term change. They're removing performance-based skill ratings for Diamond and above in competitive. So I'm guessing there were some issues with people not getting ranked the way they should be or not getting matched the way they should be. Um, like their their performance based skill rating was conflicting with their MMR. I'm guessing. Um, he said the this year's lunar event will obviously be themed around the year of the dog, which I think is just what it is for uh, the cultures that observe that. Um, he said the uprising. I don't know. Did you play the uprising event, Nick? No, I missed it last year. Okay, so it's going to be returning. They said if you didn't get a chance to play it, they're bringing it back, but they're probably going to evolve it a little bit. Maybe, uh, maybe. Hopefully, the story is a little bit different. Could, yeah, definitely could be. They, he he said their motivations. They wanted to have it there for people that you know hadn't weren't even playing Overwatch uh, back then. Um, so they're excited for that, but they're going to be changing it a little bit. And then he said later in January, so sometime this month, there will be. Um, updated loot in the base loot box so uh i don't i don't believe uh, anything's being removed but they're adding a bunch of content to the uh, base loot box so now let's say you're not in like an event time period and you're getting regular loot boxes from your um level ups or um arcade games those are going to have a like maybe you've gotten most of the stuff it's going to have a lot more even new stuff now for you um which is pretty cool do you want me to get into the melt um, Spectre thing? Or you... I can I can start it and you can jump in because you probably know a little bit more. Yeah. Um, but as many people know, there's the crazy meltdown Spectre thing with Intel and the memory leaks and all that jazz. Um, but to put, we're gonna try to put this simply really quick. Um, is essentially a security issue where people can exploit it uh, to take advantage of you know uh, sensitive information within your computer system and how your processor uh, uses it. Um, and so it's definitely a big issue where people can hack your computer very easily. And so it's a, it's a major issue and they can't fix it on like a software side or anything. It has to be through the OS of your computer. So Windows or even this uh, Apple has uh, confirmed that it, it has affected them because they use Intel chips. Um, and they have already... Up, have some updates for their Mac o OS and iOS, and those are supposedly supposed to help. And then I think as far as Microsoft, there should be a Windows update maybe out uh, tomorrow, I heard. I could be wrong, though. Okay. Um, but so basically they're saying to make sure your Windows updates are turned on so you can get those updates when they come out. I'm actually not sure if I even have mine on. I can't remember the last time my, <laughs> com my computer updated. Um, but... I have an AMD processor, so... Yeah, so there's some rumors um, going around. I saw this on a forum, and so it's not it's not confirmed by any means, but there's rumors that it's bricking AMD systems. And so to be honest, I would assume that that's not Ryzen processors. I'm thinking that's yeah. that Bulldozer, probably. Yeah, I could see... Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, I doubt it's Ryzen. I really do. Yeah, Um. and... What's funny, you were talking about the Apple. Apple's already released a bunch of updates. My Airport Express got an update last night. <laughs> like, are you even <laughs> running an Intel chip? <laughs> um, <laughs> but, yeah, Apple's been on top of stuff. 
Um, sort of some of the how-to of how this is going on is most modern day processors um, will perform calculations before you even necessarily need a task done because you did something already. So some uh, run of a, um, like let's say you were to run a program, um, your processor goes, okay, they're probably gonna also do this next. And then it does that, maybe it gets your password ready, but it puts, it, it accesses stuff from your hard drive and keeps it in, I'm guessing you're like L2 cacher. I don't, I, I'm honestly talking to my butt here, but like it, it's, it's more so it's it's you know it's called like a kernel memory yeah. leak or whatever but so the kernel is essentially standing between your processor and the windows operating system and it's kind of like um a cloud as far as your processor doesn't see what the kernel is accessing but the kernel kind of has power over everything and so now yeah people can access that information up there and that's all sensitive information and that's not okay Sounds right to me. Yeah, it's it's very complicated. Um, you can do your research. There's tons of articles on it, and it's basically everyone's affected. As even even AMD is affected to a certain degree, but AMD is way more secure because they do their chip design differently. Where you have to actually access the hardware in your computer to be able to hack it. So, you know that for the most part that's fine because you know. You'd have to act, someone would actually have to steal your computer, not just hack into it from somewhere else. Um, so, but it does affect everyone. And the the bigger problem is that the the fix on the operating system side in Windows is only a band aid fix at best, and this will also slow down everyone's processors. Um, they they're saying five to thirty percent. So, it, but it really depends on what you're doing. If you're if you're using it for workloads and you're really using a lot of your processing power, you probably will notice it. But if you're more doing day-to-day -day use, you probably won't notice it because you're not really using your processor that much. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I believe that, um, that like, more up towards the 30% is, like, um, third-generation uh, Intel chips, like uh, the 3770K or, you know, 3570 or whatever. That's, yeah. That's more, I think, Ivy Bridge and before. Um, yeah, like new, newer processors will will handle it uh, better because they're newer and they're more powerful. Yeah, I'd, um, I'd heard that Haswell and Forward, which I'm at Haswell, so I'm like, I'm a little scared. Like, <laughs> you know, like I'm on the edge. Like maybe I'm going to lose 15%, which would really suck, but it's not that yeah. bad. Um, yeah, I heard that Haswell and Forward should be decently better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and if you go on YouTube, I think people are already um, kind of benchmarking the effects of, of the update. Mm -hmm. I know, um, let me just get this guy's name, Hardware Hardware Unboxed uh, already did um, a benchmark test, I believe. I haven't watched it, but so if you want to really look into it more, there's stuff out there. Um, so, but, you know, if you didn't know, now you do, and it sucks. For sure. Um, but okay, we'll kind of uh, wrap up the show here. We're kind of running a little over an hour, which is cool. Yeah. Um, we can go over last week's poll. We asked uh, what everyone's most anticipated game for 2018 was. Uh, we had four options because that's all Twitter gave you. No one added any games in the comments, uh, which is okay. Um, the winner was Red Dead Redemption 2 uh, with 38%, uh, closely followed by Spider-Man with 34%. Monster Hunter World, 22%, and then Kingdom Hearts 3, 6%. Yeah, I think Sorry, that, was, that was me. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> no, I think I think, I think think like one or two other maybe people Maybe one voted. other person voted for it. I think, I, think, I think part of that may be people just... I don't think people believe it's coming yet. That's very true. Yeah. Never so mind. I think maybe if it was out, people would be more excited for it. Never mind, like, okay, so these are the other games, like... Uh, Red Dead Redemption 2. If you played Red Dead Redemption, you're very excited for it. Uh, right. So one game. Uh, Spider-Man. If you played Spider-Man 1 and 2, very excited for it. Kingdom Hearts 3. If you played the six games before this one, <laughs> <laughs> like it's a it's a bit of a higher uh, barrier for entry. 
So I, I, yeah, exactly. I, I get that. Yeah. Um, but okay. Um, we don't have a new poll this week unless Elias has one off the top of his head. Hadn't thought of it. We'll think of it later. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, we'll move on to our level up section. We actually got some uh, community stuff sent in. Because of the lack of time, I'm going to skip over Donut Glazer's uh, build. We'll save it for next week, especially because he's not in the chat this he has, week. He hasn't been in the chat, so we'll, we'll talk about it next week, yeah? Yep. Uh, but we did want to go over uh, Cruxel's build because he sent uh, that to us and wanted some uh, feedback on that, and he's also in the chat, so we'll, we'll give that to him. Um, I'll go over my thoughts. I'm sure, Elias, you have your thoughts. Yep. Um, so my, my initial thoughts was, with everything going on with Intel... Would you want to, you know, spend the money on a brand new Intel chip? Um, knowing, just knowing everything that's going on, you know, Ryzen is a very appealing offer right now, especially, you know, the the Ryzen seven. You got eight cores. Uh, he's, you know, he said that he'd be likely streaming on it. Um, so, so uh, th- I think there's a lot of things to take into um, account here, and especially for Croxel, like pay attention to what happens at CES this week like keep uh you know a finger on that pulse because who knows intel could come out of left field with uh i'm i'm hoping at some point soon they're going to come out with uh, an 8800k with eight eight uh, eight cores um probably less than likely but i could see it happening um and then subsequently dropping the price of the 8700k even if that's what you want to go with um on the plus side of ryzen um they've uh AMD already announced Ryzen a uh, generation 2. So you may see some price drops in the Ryzen camp uh subsequently. Um so on the on the processor side of things like I don't think it's a set deal. I do I do typically favor Intel more, but I just think there's so much going on right now that yeah, you really should maybe wait a little bit. Yeah. Um, I just, mean just to see what's going on. Even uh, at CES, they've already announced that Ryzen will be getting a price cut soon. Um, yeah. You know, maybe if you do more research, you can probably find more inf- information. Um, but I did read that, and uh, they're they're saying three fifty for the top Ryzen seven chip, which is the eighteen hundred X. Obviously, you know, we we don't want to speculate too much as far as you know going into the year. So you know, as of right now, what you can buy. You know, depending on you know how much you want to use this for streaming and everything, Ryzen seven. I, I'm I'm slightly partial just because I got a Ryzen five and I like it. Um, yeah. And just I don't know everything on with Intel. I don't know. It, it's it's <laughs> kind of like you have the. I think you have to take that into consideration because yeah. it's yeah. I, th- I think that I think that Ryzen, especially with the price cuts that are going to come, is an even stronger choice. And, yeah, and I would bet that the I don't know, but I would think that the Ryzen Generation Two isn't going to be that much more um, efficient or powerful than the first no. generation Ryzen processor. It might have a little less uh, glitches at launch, but we've already gotten through that on Ryzen currently. So um, I would go with Ryzen Generation One currently if you're looking at the AMD camp. Um, yeah. He's got the NZXT uh, Kraken X62. He knows my feelings Ooh. on all-in-one water cooling. Right. I'm. I'm gonna say this. I saw that cooler. I'm like, yes. Yeah. I mean. That. That's. It's a. It's a. It's because his whole theme. You could just tell RGB. It's this. It with that cooler in yeah. in your RAM. Cool, it's just. It's gonna got a look. Nice light on it for sure. It's gonna be so pretty. It's like by <laughs> far the best water cooler, as far as aesthetics. I'm sure it works great. Um. Yep. Yeah. No. I've. Yeah, I, I liked it. it. I was like, "Ooh, yeah, yeah." The uh, the MSI motherboard one nineteen with a ten dollar rebate, like that's not half bad for uh, a nice motherboard. I, I'm not looking at all the features right now, but it looks you know looks decent enough for. 100 yeah, bucks. no, I, I I briefly looked at it. Everything seemed good. Yeah, uh, it's an ATX, one, so you don't. One thing to check, and I don't know, but if you need Bluetooth or you need Wi-Fi, just not all motherboards come with bluetooth or wi-fi so just double check that you have what you need oh um, yeah or can buy or you could buy a, a pcie adapter for it yeah oh. um and then your ram oh, i just like it's it hurts to see the prices on ram um my only th- my only thought was 
you know, you talked about f- future proofing in your email. Um, you could potentially look at getting a, a two by 16 gigabyte sticks. Uh, that way down the right, that down the road, you could, you know, get two more 16 gigabyte. Not that like you need that much, but I mean, as far as future proofing, if uh, I think the price difference is around the same. Um, so that that's just a thought, but mm. I mean, 32 gigabytes of RAM is, is, is plenty anyways. Um, so yeah. I, that was just my, my thought on that. I think 32 is a pretty sweet spot right now. Like going up to 64 is just insanely expensive. Like it's yeah. the price of a graphics card, which is ridiculous. Oh yeah. Um, it's, it's crazy. I think, I think that, yeah, if you could go for the two by 16, that's probably what I would do. Um, but at the same time, remember you could always, you know, move that memory to another build. Like if you want, this is not a point that I would typically argue for, but if you want it, if you want that four um, lanes of RGB next to each other, that's what I was saying too. I was like, but I'm sure he's going for the nice aesthetic of if, all the RAM. If you want that, like you can always sell that RAM later. You can always um, move it to another build if you have another DDR4 based uh, system. So I mean, you know. You're going to be always be, I mean, you're in the PC building world, so it's not the worst thing to have a, a 4x8 kit. 4x8 yeah. gigabyte kit. Yeah. Um, I'm going to skip over what I thought about storage. Uh, okay. As far as your GPU, you know, EVGA, 1080 Ti, that's beautiful. The the price, I was just like, oh my god. I You know, I looked on Newegg, and I looked on Amazon. The prices are insane right now. I, yeah, I, paid, I didn't even realize. I remember I paid for my 1080 Ti, I paid like 700 something for it. Yeah. And like two weeks later, because they were out of stock, somebody was selling them on Amazon for $1,300. Like, <sighs> it's just price gouging at this point. Um, yeah. Something I would say, a 1080 Ti, they're not necessarily all created equal. But no. A 1080 Ti is a 1080 Ti, and you, you know you are playing the silicon lottery to a degree, so you could always overclock it. Um, yeah. You know, as long as you're comfortable with Afterburner. The other thing to say, if you like EVGA, which you should, because they're a great company for graphics cards, check out EVGA B stock. Um, they don't always have things in the B stock, but when they do, um, they're at normal prices, if not lower. Um. And if you've bought an EVGA processor in the last year, or EVGA uh, graphics card in the last year, I think you qualify for like their elite club, and you can get even better deals typically on their B stock yeah. uh, cards. Um. So he says you you want to get the ASUS uh, Strix version, which uh, I have a RX RX four eighty uh, Strix, which is awesome. I love ASUS. Um. But yeah, I did find a, a Gigabyte ten eighty, which is what you have, Elias. Yeah. Um. For for eight twenty on Amazon. Ooh, is so it the, is it the normal or the extreme? Not that it really matters. The only thing, if you're gonna go gigabyte, don't use their software. Download their software. <laughs> download their software. Change the you know the color of the LED. Delete their software. Get, at, <laughs> get afterburner. It sucks. Yeah. A lot but of, I mean. Yeah. And, and he's you know he said that the budget wasn't a big deal so. If it's not that big of a deal, then get what you want. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, eight twenty compared to the eleven, eleven thirty. I think. I mean, that's like three hundred bucks. Yeah. I mean, go go buy. I don't know, anything. <laughs> three hundred dollars. You could have a whole another five hundred. You could have two more. You can go like your storage options are unlimited. You could go for that sixty-four gigabyte kit of memory. Like, yeah. I would just really try to find a normal priced. Uh, graphics card because that is price gouging the thousand yeah it's awful it's ri- it, that's ridiculous it's really awful yeah um but so uh overall i gave the build a b plus mostly because and it's not it wasn't mostly of what you picked it was mostly stuff happening with intel and then also just the horrendous prices on everything um but also i t- i took into account the fact that you did say budget wasn't a big problem um so i i think it's a great build I just, you know, a couple of things could have been, you know, I, I think I think a big part of it was really Intel. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. Um, real quick, uh, one other note on the, he has the NZXT H700i uh, mid-tower case. Um, it is a good-looking case for sure. It, you, I don't know if you know, you probably know, but maybe you don't. 
the uh, S340 Elite, which is a little bit cheaper, maybe not as fully featured, but you can get one. I know he plays a lot of CSGO. You can get a uh, Hyper Beast um, custom painted one straight from NZXT. So if you wanted to go full out, very colorful, um, it looks pretty cool. Just look it up. And, and it's cheaper, so you might save a little money. Um, he, he also said in the chat, 300 could buy me a lot of RGB components. <laughs> yep. And then he also goes on to say uh, he's going to do more research on Ryzen. Um, so, yeah. So I would yeah I would definitely do that. And Ryzen is is good, especially when you're considering streaming or anything like that. It's it's really good for what the for what you get for the price. It's been proven that Ryzen is good. Uh, AMD has you know actually made good chips. Yeah, uh, <laughs> recently they're, they're I mean I can I can vouch for it too. I have a Ryzen five, uh, sixteen hundred, and I love it. It runs games good. It is a six core, so it, it can. I've streamed very little, but it works. So I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm streaming on a forty-seven seventy K. Like, you can stream on lower end, but if you're, you know, so you do you just like when you're going for a build this much. Yeah, you want the best, but you also want to make sure that your money's counting where you put it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's a very good point, and like I said, pay attention to what happens at CES this week. Yep. So he says the final thoughts. He says. You already asked, this should slaughter pretty much anything I throw at it, right? Yes. Yeah. Definitely. You're going to be able to, until, I mean, unless you're like, you need a video rendered in 10 minutes, like, yeah, you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. I mean, even if if you're more worried about the streaming or rendering part, I mean, that's even more reason to get an 8-core Ryzen part, honestly. Yeah. So, but all right, guys, uh, we're going to go through our conclusion outro section part thing. Um, you can follow the show on Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube, all at Respawn Mondays. Um, we do do the show at 8 o'clock uh, every Monday, so keep that in mind if you want to catch us live. Um, you can follow me personally at NikkiGirl7 on Twitter and uh, NikkiGirlGaming on YouTube. Uh, what about you, Elias? Uh, you can follow me on Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube, all at Tolmaeth, T-O-L-M-A-E-I-T-H. Um probably going to be streaming some League of Legends after this. I don't know. We had talked about that maybe. Yep, um, maybe. Yeah, yeah. So maybe do that. Going to hit, be hitting some uh, Kingdom Hearts tomorrow and then some random PUBG, CSGO stuff throughout the week. So Awesome. Come hang out. Awesome. All right. You can uh, do us a big favor if you want. You can go over uh, to iTunes and give our podcast a listen. Uh, you can find our podcast anywhere you listen to uh, podcasts. So if you want to go to iTunes, though, and leave us a review, that will help us. Uh, we also have a, a Patreon uh, account. So if you go to patreon.com slash Respawn Mondays, you can leave us a tip there if you so desire. We would appreciate it very much. Um, but all right. Thank you guys for listening this week. Uh, I'm Nick Barry. I'm Elias Christensen. And thanks for responding with us. We'll see you next week. <laughs>